Hi, welcome to For Your Home. I'm Sloan Rudder. And I'm Vicki Payne. If you enjoy touring new homes and show houses, then you're going to love the new season of For Your Home. That's right. Join us this season as we share our experiences as interior decorators on this year's Dream Home Show House. This is the most exciting, jam-packed, full of design ideas season ever, and it starts right now. For Your Home is made possible by Anderson Hardwood committed to producing distinctive, environmentally responsible hardwood flooring while helping to create a better planet for today and tomorrow. For more information, go to andersonfloors.com. Anderson, naturally. And by... And by... Ames. Ames True Timber has offered innovative landscape products since 1774, providing non-powered lawn and garden tools, wheelbarrows and lawn carts, watering products and decorative accessories, including planters. And by Riverside Furniture. You know, so and so far, it's been a really easy experience working with Eric. Well, you know, Mom, maybe it has something to do with the fact that he's built over 200 homes, and of those 200 homes, eight of them have been award-winning show homes. Well, yeah, but this is your and my first show home, so we That's need true. somebody with a lot of experience and a lot of patience. Got that right. Like the time that you were waiting to pick out the color for the downstairs and you couldn't decide and he had the painter waiting with the sprayer in hand. Yeah, or how about when you were at the granite yard for three hours trying to pick out the perfect countertops? And our man with patience is here again waiting on us as usual. Hey sweetie, why don't you go in and check the wallpaper and drape samples with the wall okay. color and I'll check in with Eric. Perfect. You can already tell from the outside that this is an absolutely gorgeous house. I can't wait to share the inside with you. This is our builder, Eric Johnson. How are you doing today, Eric? Good, Vicki. How are you today? You know, Eric, this is your house. Take us on a tour. Let's take a look. Come on into our grand foyer, Vicki. I love how wide open this is. It's one of my favorite things about this house. Well, it sets the whole stage to the house. This is a traditional English cottage, and we have our traditional elements right here up front. Over here off the foyer, we have our formal study has stained panels, stained beams up above, high ceiling and pocket doors that set it off. But I know Sloan and you have some different ideas we for that. We sure room. do. We're going to make that into a music room. I think that's a great idea. And then over here off our foyer, we have the traditional dining room. And in a luxury home this size, we would expect a dining room of this size with all the traditional panels and the chair rail around it and all that. The molding is just perfect. Just what we need for that. Vicki, come on in our family room. Break down that hallway is our owner's suite. I love the size of that space too. It's just wonderful. And it's keeping with the size of a luxury home. In the family room here, we have some formal features. We have our formal built-ins. We have a limestone cast mantle that's not quite here yet. And then we have our coffered ceiling, uh -huh. which all overlooks our outdoor living area, which has a stone fireplace, stone porch, and then all the way down the stairs is another stone terrace. You know, and I love the fact that you can see this space from almost anywhere in this house. It's just really beautiful. Now, don't think that we are rushing you through this beautiful home because over the next 13 shows, Sloan and I are going to share every detail with you. Let's show them our kitchen and our casual living area. Okay, let's do it. Now, this is one of my favorite parts of the house. It's the kitchen. There is such a great variety of materials that we selected for this space. We have a lot of different finishes on our cabinets. We have different styles, designated cooking spaces. But one of the best features are two islands. That's right, we've got two of those beautiful islands to work with. This is our prep island. And over here, we have our serving island. And down at the end of the room, we have our keeping room. And we've tied in both rooms together with a series of cedar beams. Have our breakfast nook over there. And then we have our screen and porch out there, which continues our outdoor living. Hey, Eric, can you come up here, please? 
please. You know, Eric, I think I hear somebody calling your name for the upstairs tour. Duty calls. Eric, everything looks awesome up here. It looks so good. Let's let our viewers see everything you've done up here. We'll start in the meeting room. Okay. The fireplace turned out fabulous. It looks really beautiful, Eric. Well, we gave it a very relaxed look. Mm -hmm. Farmhouse style mantle with built-ins on either side. They fit all your AV equipment. Fits Love that. my big screen TV. Absolutely. And you know, I think the feeling of this, sort of the farmhouse, relaxed feeling, everyone's gonna be hanging out up here. This is really gonna be an entertainment area for everyone, sure. right? Absolutely. We also have three very large bedrooms up here, serviced by two full baths and another half bath for this room. Eric, you've done such an incredible job on this house. Mom and I are going to get started on decorating. We've got some really exciting ideas that is going to do this home justice. I can't wait to see them. Sloan and I have decorated hundreds of spaces, but this will be our very first show house. We're excited about this project for lots of reasons. When this house is completed, it will be the dream home for the Charlotte affiliates of the Susan G. Coleman Association. The Coleman Association is the world's largest and most progressive grassroots network of breast cancer survivors and activists fighting to put an end to cancer forever. As a cancer survivor myself, a daughter, a mother, and a grandmother, this is a really important issue, one that Sloan and I are very proud to support. We expect thousands of design enthusiasts to tour this dream home to see all the latest in home decor and new house construction. It's a daunting task, but it's one that Sloan and I are certainly up for. We broke ground on this project four months ago. Trees were cleared, foundations were dug, and the process was underway. Energy efficiency is an important issue for all homeowners, but when you're in new construction, it's the perfect opportunity to build in some great ENERGY STAR features like house wrap, insulation, energy efficient doors and windows, and high quality roofing. Those are just a few examples of the energy features that you can take advantage of during the construction process. The exterior of this house is stucco and stone, a real classic combination but with a new twist. The color is embedded into the stucco for a long lasting beautiful finish that requires little or no maintenance. And of course, stone has been the choice of builders for centuries. Cedar trim and aluminum clad windows are beautiful and require very little upkeep as well. Now with new construction comes lots and lots of mud. Here in the south we have our own unique kind of mud, it's sticky red clay. When you're building a new home, you become very adept at walk in the plank and jump in the puddles. But now we have progress to the point that we have a driveway and a new stone walkway. Sounds like a small deal? Not really if you've been scraping your boots for the last four months. So not only do Mom and I get to decorate the inside of this beautiful home, but we get to do a little bit of decorating on the outside of this home with some great landscape projects. Now, just like you've got construction going on on the inside and the outside, constructing of your flower beds is something you need to pay attention to. And here to give us a hand is Master Gardener Billy Stiles. Hey, Billy, how hey, are Sloan, you? How are you? Good. Good to have you back. Thanks and for Billy, having me. We've got this great little flower bed right here, but this is just an accent flower bed, right? It is accent flower bed. It's, it's raised up. It's going to accent these windows here. Okay. It's also going to be above our scape that we have out here, okay. which will give us a little bit of structure standing up. So this up. isn't our only flower bed. It's this not is our just only a one. little bit of an accent. Okay, now when we talk about construction of this bed, this is done with the same stone that's on the house. Right. Just great material, matches wonderfully, but there's some precautions we have to take, right? And those are starting with water. Okay. We want to make sure we protect the home Ooh. from any water that okay. gets in this bed because this is a closed bed. Right. It's not the ground where it can run off, so we want to start with this uh, rubber membrane if you see okay. here. Oh, that's really durable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice, and, nice and strong. Now this will take and it'll be lined on the inside of the house wall as okay. well as it'll come around all the walls. So that's going to go on all four sides all four of our walls. bed? All four walls. But okay. we'll have nothing on the bottom. You know, when right. we're watering these plants to keep them alive or whether it's raining, we want to water out. And that's how, and that's what we do down here is we come and we have a series of drains uh, around this bed that lets the water out. Okay. That's obviously our key factor here. It is. Because protecting the, the house from the water, like you said, keeping the water out, but then getting it out of these flower beds. Because if you don't, then you're going to end up with root rot and everything else, everything and mildew, else. and it's going to be a big old mess. And if you don't have those in a bed, and you I was have just a bed, say if you've got some beds like this at home, right, right, right. 
Can, can they go, go back in? Well, you, at construction, you can put it in, in the mortar and right, have it ready to go. Convenient. Or you can come back in and drill a hole with a concrete bit, slide your PVC in, okay. caulk around it. You want to put a screen on the other end of it so that you don't get it clogged up with dirt, okay. and you'll be ready to drain. All right, so make sure that you have those. If you've got these beds at home and they're not doing good, that might be your problem. Yes. All right, let's talk about plantings in this bed. We have our beautiful windows that right. roll out, which are lovely, but that means that we can't put anything up too high. Got to be small, and you don't want to have something you're going to have to keep continue to prune right. because it's going to cause stress on the plant. Okay. So we could put something here like maybe a dwarf tom tom, which is a little bitty ornamental. Okay. But then we have we want to highlight this with some colors. We go through the season, and as we do that, that's where we have these pots here. Okay. We do a thing we call pot in pot. Oh. We direct, okay. And this fits down in Perfect. here. Perfect. And what that does, Sloan, is that allows us when we want to change this bed out or change the colors we see with this Which one this here. This one's gorgeous. As I we love see this, with this one. This is beautiful. We can change the color out from fall okay. to spring to even summer. We can put things like ice plants to drape over, uh, verbenum, anything with color. But the thing is, is we're able to do it without damaging the roots. Which is key because we want all of those other like you said, doing the little dwarf evergreens in right. here, we want those to stay intact and not be messed with at all. Because this no is damage. a tight space. It is a tight space, but it's a great accent bed. It's, it's And those roots are going to take off in there. They're going to so take off. So this is obviously really, really a key the project. The way to go. Okay. You can do this out in the garden also. Okay. It doesn't just have to be in a bed. If it's around a tree oh. or something you have in your landscape and you don't want to continue to dig around it, okay. but you want to have some color, it's the way to go. And pot in the ground. I was just going to say, pot. and of course, though, they're going to need to make sure that they do not use a plastic pot. That's going to ruin everything. Gotta be go terracotta. Ahead. It's got to be a terracotta pot. Right. And okay. as you can see, these here are nice and moist. Yeah, and this And they'll is a let the water flow pot. both ways. Okay. Great way, too, though, for them to get some kind of different things, vines, switch it around. Switch like you said, around. switch it color, switch it seasonally. They it's can really move it around. Right. It's important to make sure that your landscape meet, uh, matches your house. Okay. Now, we've got you out here, obviously, as everyone can tell by the noise, right in the, in the heart of the construction, right. which is really the key thing. It's to have you out here now so you can come out and spend the day and you really get to see where the sun goes and get a good feel for what's going to do good in here and what's not going to You got to know your good. microclimate when it comes to planting anything. If you don't know what the sunlight levels are, then you're going to be in trouble. Okay. And this is a great time to start off and help the homeowner understand the environments in which they're growing in. Very key. And like you said, match up your landscaping. That's right. a big mistake that people make. They build a beautiful home like this, but the landscaping doesn't match. It's doesn't going to ruin fit. the whole thing, well, right? That's right. All right. So good bet to get your landscaper out here right at the beginning of the project so he can work right alongside of you. Billy, as Appreciate always, thanks so me. much for coming thanks out me. and thanks for giving us a hand on this project. See you. You know, this is a really beautiful house, but like all great homes, they can always benefit from a little bit of accessorizing. Now, out here on the front porch, it's a narrow porch and we're not gonna have any room for furniture, but we have these large spaces right here of just plain taupe colored stucco. I thought it would be great if we were to find some wonderful metal pieces to go out here. They'll tie in great with the railing and the overall look of the house. So I went to the store and here's a tip for you when you're out shopping for any accessories. Buy as many as you can find that you think you like because you can always take them back. But don't take the tags off of them first. Now this was the first one that I picked out. I really like the fact that it had the same tones of bronze as our railing does and it has kind of this little English design in the center of it and the scroll work kind of softens up some of the lines and there's plenty of room for this piece on both sides of the doorway. Now the only problem with this is it just is not something we can change out seasonally. And as a designer I love it when there are things that I can change from time to time. Then I ran across these beauties. Take a look at this. I think these are just fantastic little sconces or planters. And this up against the house, see how much more interest this has? You know, we can do a lot of different things with it. We have in here some color variations. It has a soft matte old world finish, so that matches really well. But it is actually a planter, so we can do a lot of great things to it. Now, where do you hang these? Well, since we're going to be using this and accessorizing it, we don't want it way up high like this because then it'll be too hard to reach. We don't want it too low because then you won't be able to see it from the street. So we want to get it up to where it's about five and a half feet to the center of the piece. That's a good place to hang it. Now, how about distance-wise? 
the distance that we have on each side of our library doors, they're different sizes. This wall is smaller than our other wall. So if we were to center it on these two walls, it wouldn't look right. The best way to do it is to center it on our small wall, then take a measurement from where this is to the edge of the door frame, and then that's the place you want to hang it on the other wall. That way, when you look at the house from the street, both of our ornaments will be exactly the same distance from the library doors, and you'll never notice that those two walls aren't the same size. Hey, Robert, can you give me a hand out here? Yes, Vicki. What do you need? Well, I've got these great sconces here, and I want to hang these right here on the side of the door. Now, I've already got this one marked right here, and if you'll hang this one here, then measure just from the same side of the frame over there, over to that distance, and put the second one in, I think we'll be in good shape. Great, no okay. problem. You know, it's always so much fun to have somebody who knows what they're doing hang something when you're working outdoors. Okay, I brought some fun stuff for us to play with, but before we do that, I want to talk about how to protect your house when you have a planter like this. Now, this is made out of 10. They were very affordable. They cost me $35 a piece. And that means that they're going to rust, though, if they get damp, and especially if you're hanging them somewhere where there's going to be rain running down on them. Have you ever seen someone's house that has a big rust streak running down? Well, that's what I'm talking about. So how we're going to stop that from happening is you're going to go to the hardware store, you're going to buy yourself a can of lacquer, spray lacquer in a matte finish, or whatever the finish is on the object that you're trying to uh, coat. And you're going to spray this entire thing, the outside, the inside. Make sure you get it all covered with a good coat of lacquer in that satin finish in our case so that it won't be able to rust and stain up your property. Now, I'm going to be putting fresh flowers as well as artificial flowers in my planters. So I'm going to use clear silicone and go into the inside of this and just run a bead of it all the way around it so that it really seals it up so it'll hold water. And then, you know, you may have to redo that, maybe only after every four or five years. But you want to do those prep deals before you start decorating from the very beginning. Now, this is my favorite accessory for something like that, and that would be fresh flowers. Look at these gorgeous sunflowers. Let me trim this last one off for us. Now, these are absolutely gorgeous, and I'm going to put these down into here. And wouldn't these be absolutely perfect for like a Thanksgiving gathering or something to that effect? And lots of them, and because we've made it airtight, then they'll hold water really perfect. And you just want to fill this up and take your time, of course, to organize it and make it really beautiful. If you want to add some greenery, you can. But this is just a beautiful display for any of the fall holidays or bright summer ones. Now, in the Christmas time, you can change this out and put some greenery in it. Now, if you're like a lot of people, myself included, I'm not always up for buying fresh flowers on a weekly basis. So for that case, you might want to use greenery, artificial, of course. Now, artificial greenery, again, when you go to the craft store and you buy them, buy all different kinds because what looks good on the shelf may look terrible in your planner. For example, I thought this was pretty nifty looking stuff, right? But when I put it in this planner, what happens? It hides all the pretty design to the planner. Not a good choice. So this is going back to the store. What am I going to use instead? These great fake grasses. Look at that. Look how pretty that looks and look how fast it was. We don't want to forget the back entrance to our house. We want to add some great ornamentation there by putting a planter on the wall. Now, this is a nice black metal planter. I've already coated it with some flat varnish so it won't rust on the house. And I selected this great black pepper plant. It's an ornamental pepper plant. It has great white in its leaves. It came in a pot with three plants in it. So all I did was go in with my trowel and separate out and pull out just one of the plants because all three would have been too large. And we've placed it right in the center. 
Now, this is going to be hanging right where you pass it every day going in the back door. So we're going to put some rosemary in there. It'll smell great. I'm pulling off all of those roots that were bound around the bottom of it. And then we're just going to go in and tuck it right on the side. So we've got that tucked in there. Now, I selected some white pansies to go in here. You can select any annuals you want. But I selected the white pansies because they're going to bring out the white and the leaves of our pepper plant. And we're just going to tuck two or three of these on each side in that kind of fashion. Once I get it filled up with dirt, I'm going to hang it on the wall and use a little bit of this great Spanish moss just to hang off it to soften the look. All right, Eric, Mom and I cannot wait to get our hands on a set of keys and get all of the beautiful things that we've ordered inside the house. When can we do that? Well, we, have, we need a few things first. Okay. We have gone through about eight to ten inspections so far, and we need four more to get wow. our certificate of occupancy. That's a lot of inspections. Now, is that like a nationwide thing, or is that just here in the Carolinas? It can be different in whatever jurisdiction you're in. Okay. So the last four that we have left to do... Is our building final, which okay. means all our steps and rails and everything are up to code. All right. That we have all of our electrical fixtures on, all of our covers on, our HVAC unit can be run, and on our plumbing that we have all the plumbing fixtures installed. Those okay. are just minimal building requirements. So this is just sort of their final sweep through the home to make sure that we didn't change anything since the last time they were here? Absolutely. And, and then once they give that stamp of approval, okay. we'll get our certificate of occupancy. And then we can move in. Absolutely. All right. And now, do they go ahead and contact the power company and water, or is that something we need to... Nope. They do that, and Great. automatically they just come with the power and the gas. Perfect. All right. So not too long until we can get our hands on that. Now, when that happens, can you do me a favor and give us a call so we can arrange the movers? Absolutely. All right. Coming up next, a classic FYH decorating tip. If you like to decorate as much as Sloan and I do, then you're probably running out of spaces to put all of those accessory items you've purchased, especially from one season to the next. You know, your fireplace mantle is a great way to make a real focal point in your room for each changing season. In the summertime, it's great to have seashells all the way across your fireplace mantle, but what are you gonna do with them when the weather turns cold? Well, the way I like to store my items is to use these great plastic containers. Now, some of them are color coordinated, some of them aren't. So I just simply take any color that I like. For the summer, I like to use blue, and I label them with whatever the contents are. This is gonna hold all my seashells. Now, you wanna have some tissue paper on hand, and you wanna start with the heaviest objects first. Wrap those up nice and secure, and then place them right down inside of your tub. Then take your smaller, lighter weight shells and start to fill in around it. Now, a lot of the items that we use to decorate season to season can be recycled. For example, take a look at this great hurricane vase that I have here. Wonderful thick glass jar can be used for almost anything you can think of. So we're going to recycle it. We don't want to pack it away. We're going to take out the candle and if the candle is still nice and clean and in good shape, that's great. We'll use it for something else. Then we're going to take the shells out of here and just put them in a resealable bag like I have right here. That way, you can put them all down into this area. When you get it all filled up, zip it closed and put it into the bag. Then your container can simply be washed out, dried, and ready for a brand new season. Now, if you have paintings that you use from season to season like I do, for example, see this great shell print that we have up here? Well, I absolutely love that, but I don't love it after September. So I take that, slide it between two pieces of cardboard and label it as well, and store it in the attic. That way, no matter who you send up there to help retrieve those items, they'll know exactly what you're talking about. Then it's time to bring down the Halloween box. These are color coordinated for you, and it's a great way to keep all of those holiday items together. I also love the fact that at the end of the season, I can get great half price sales, pick up some great napkins or accessory items, tuck them right into that box and put it up into the attic. Sloan, we sure have a lot of spaces to decorate in this house. We sure do, Mom, and we only have 13 days to get it all done. It's a good thing we got a jump start on our furniture order. Absolutely, and next time on For Your Home, that truck's backing up and all that furniture is coming into this house. We're going to kick this project off by decorating the boys' room first. 
That's right, so stick with us next time on For Your Home when we are going to give you a sneak peek behind the scenes look at Show House 101. If you would like additional information about today's guests or project ideas, please visit us on the web at foryourhome.com. We will do our best to help you out. For Your Home is made possible by Shaw Floors offers distinctive flooring options to fit a variety of decors. Shaw strives to have a positive impact on the environment by producing recyclable products like Anso Nylon Carpets and Epic Hardwoods. Shaw, where great floors begin. And by And by Ames. Ames True Timber has offered innovative landscape products since 1774, providing non-powered lawn and garden tools, wheelbarrows and lawn carts, watering products and decorative accessories, including planters. And by Riverside Furniture.